So, in the previous video we installed the JDK and you'd imagine that that's enough. However, we still need to do more though. So if we go back into terminal, what we need to do now is to set up a thing called an environment variable which tells other applications or other tools that might be interested to know, it tells them where the JDK is located. So the environment variable we're going to create is called java underscore home. We just need to know where the JDK has been installed to because unlike the Windows version when you install in Windows it tells you the actual path it's installing to, the directory it's going to install the contents of the installation to. On Mac it doesn't do that but we can use a special command for that which we'll see in a second. And then once we've got that location of where it's installed it to then we need to just export that value out to make it accessible as that environment variable in the correct file which is where that version check comes in of the actual version of macOS which we're using uh, which we'll see. First off though let's see where we installed the JDK to. So if I type user libexec and then java underscore home and hit enter we'll see that this is the actual directory that it's installed the JDK to. So in fact if I copy this just right click or double tap and hit copy and then go into a finder window and then shift command g to go to a specific folder and just paste that in with command v to paste and then go. You can see here just organized by details, you can see here that this is the actual contents of the JDK that it's installed. And it's this folder here that we're going to expose via that environment variable java underscore home. Because some of the tools will use that to be able to locate different items inside this folder. So for example, the most common one would be inside the JRE folder, inside the lib subdirectory there, right down the bottom we have an rt.jar folder and that's actually the Java runtime which comprises all of the classes and libraries which are part of the JDK, the, the standard edition of the Java platform. All of the bytecode for those are actually inside that jar file. Another reason we want to have Java or Java underscore home as well, if we just scroll back up, is that if we look, close this down for a second, if we look inside the bin subdirectory then what we can see in here are the collection of command line tools that we can use from the JDK. And the two most important ones, of course, are Java C or Javac, which is the Java compiler, used to compile our Java code into bytecode, which is then executed by the JVM, which is in this command here, which is the Java command. So we're going to set Java underscore home up as an environment variable to point to this directory. And then we're going to make sure that the bin subdirectory of that, which contains all of these commands here, we're going to make sure that's on the so-called system path, which is the path that's used by terminal to find the commands or to locate the commands that correspond to commands that you type in here. So that's great. Now I say by terminal, it's not actually used by terminal, it's by the so-called shell. So terminal is an application which just provides a text-based interface inside a window for you to execute commands in, but what actually executes those commands is a thing called a shell, which is kind of like a mini program which executes inside terminal itself. Now, there are two main types of shell in Mac platforms. Now, up until macOS Catalina, which is 10.15, which is the one I'm using, if you remember, if we go back to here, go to about this Mac, we can see here I'm using macOS Catalina 10.15. Now, up until version 10.15, in other words, from 10.14 and below, the main shell which was used is a shell called Bash, which stands for born again shell, so Bash, the Bash shell, which is also the most popular shell used on Linux systems and Unix systems as well, so not just on Mac. However, from version 10.15, so macOS Catalina and upwards, so that's macOS Catalina and also macOS Big Sur, Apple have now changed it and the default shell isn't Bash, it's now a different shell called Z Shell. All this means to you is that depending on which shell you've got, you have to put the command which I'm about to show you in a different file. Now if you're not sure which shell you're using, you can also run this other command called echo dollar shell and it will show you. If it says something like slash bin slash ZSH, it means you're using the Z Shell, if it says slash bin slash bash, then you're using bash as a shell. So I'm using Z shell, so I'm going to modify a specific file, which is in my home directory, which is what that funny squiggle means. It's called the tilde symbol, it means the home directory, which is actually slash users slash, and then the user account, which is Matt in this case. And inside there, there's a file dot zsh env, which is the Z shell environment file. So I'm running Vi now, which is a text editor which is available on all Mac and Unix Linux based systems, but it's really quirky to use. So you type Vi space and then the file name that you want to edit or create. And now we're inside this file. Now if we press I, which stands for insert, now we're in the insert mode. It's a bit of a funny text editor as a Vi because you can't just type commands and save them and everything. It's, you have to be very precise and use these commands to be able to use it. So just follow along exactly as I'm doing now. So press I and now you can see at the bottom it says insert, which means we're in insert mode, which means we can 
actually type now. And then we're going to type export java underscore harm equals. And we can just command V that directory which we had in the clipboard from before. So I'm just setting java underscore harm to the directory where the JDK is installed. We also then export path equals and then just put java underscore harm forward slash bin and then a colon which means append what I'm about to put now which is dollar path. What this does is it basically re-exports what's already in the path variable. So dollar path would be replaced with the actual contents of what's in the path variable, which was in the system path, which is the collection of directories which are looked in when you type a command. And it will basically put this java underscore home folder, or the full folder, which is this folder here. It'll expand now to that, and then put a slash bin at the end of it, and include that as the first directory which is going to be looked in when we type any commands in the shell. So now if we type escape, then colon wq, which stands for write and quit. That means it's written the file. We can then just do cat of that file name just to double check that it's definitely been written. And yep, here we can see it's been written. And then if we just close terminal completely and quit it, in fact, and then go back into it. Now when we type Java minus version, we see that we've got 180.291 installed, which is correct. And if we do Java minus version, again, we see the same version. So Java don't forget is the JVM, the Java virtual machine command and Java is the Java compiler command. And at this point, because the versions are the same as what we expected, which are the version of the JDK we actually installed, we're all set up, we've got the JDK installed on this machine, and we can now start to develop Java code.